Parashat Miket Shabbat Chanukah, as the story of Yosef intensifies, we see the brothers coming back from Egypt the first time, telling Yaakov the one brother's in prison, and now the guy in Egypt wants the little brother to come down back to Mitzayim with them, and Yaakov gets all upset, and then we have this interesting conversation going on between Yaakov Reuben and then Yehuda and Yaakov about who's gonna vouch, who's gonna guarantee the return of Binyamin. And Yaakov seems to ignore Reuben and only listen to Yehuda, and we really try to understand what's the difference, what was so unique about what Yehuda said. Why did he only step up then and not step up before when Reuben was speaking to Yaakov? What did he wait for? What was so unique about what he was promising? And how does this have to do with who Yehuda is? And continuing what we discussed last week about the character of Yehuda and its uniqueness. Yes, and of course, as usual, we dove into the Psukim themselves. Again, there are some incredible ideas in the Hebrew language that the Torah uses over here. As we always emphasize, you have to pay attention to the words the Torah uses because there's a very obvious word the Torah uses over here in different forms, in different ways which shines a totally different light on the story here. Maybe the light of Hanukkah. You'll have to listen to the whole video. Hope you enjoy it. Take a look. Hanukkah Sameach, Shabbat Hanukkah, Parashat Miketz. This week, I want to continue, like we said, the story of Yehuda. As we were saying last week, there are two stories developing over here in this week's parashot. The story, of course, of Yosef, the main story in these parashot, who Yosef is, what is Yosef about, everything around him. But also, side by side, we have another story developing, another figure, another character developing of Yehuda, as we discussed last week. And in this week's parasha, as we see the brothers coming back from time the first time, we see them coming straight to Yaakov telling him what has happened to them, everything that has happened to them and the fact that now they have to bring down back down with them to Egypt, Binyamin because this is what Yosef is demanding since he believes they are Meraglim. Yaakov gets upset at them and then Reuven steps up and says, let me handle it. If I don't bring him back to you, you can kill both my sons. Yaakov doesn't really answer that. The story ends over there and then the Torah tells us that there is a very great famine in the land. People are starving. They're out of food and again, now they really have to send someone down to go to Egypt and Yehuda then steps up and says we can't go down unless we bring Binyamin with us and then Yaakov again continues to argue and says why did you do this to me why did you bring this disaster on me but then Yehuda steps up even more and says I will guarantee to bring back Binyamin and if not I will sin to you all my life if I don't bring him back it will be a big disaster to you and it seems that this works now Yaakov is convinced and now Yaakov lets them go down to meet Zion with Binyamin and there's two questions you have to ask over here on what Yehuda just said First of all, why is Yehuda stepping up only now when there's no more food left, when the famine is very strong, and when they really have to go down to Egypt? Why didn't he say anything back then when they just came back when Reuven was stepping up? And on top of that, you have to ask, why is Yehuda's suggestion that different than what Reuven suggested? What is that suggestion by Reuven? What is this suggestion by Yehuda? What are they suggesting, each of them? Why does Yehuda's suggestion, why did Yehuda's offer seem to calm Yaakov's mind? Why does this guarantee from Yehuda help assure to Yaakov to allow them to take Binyamin down to Mitzrayim. So what's going on over here in this story? How is this part of Yudas character? What are we seeing over here? Yeah, you know, it's very interesting. What is Reuven saying? You know, you can kill my two children. Where, where did that come from? But I suddenly realized, what is his two children? He's referring to Yaakov, who's worried about losing two children, right? Yosef, and now maybe Binyamin. And he's saying, you can kill my two children, which is obviously a statement. Nobody's going to kill his children, but it's a statement of Reuven saying, I'm confident. I'm going to do it. I'm going to bring him back. Don't worry. Everything's going to be okay. Yaakov doesn't accept that. And as you said, Yehuda doesn't step up. Maybe Yehuda doesn't step up because Yehuda knows what it means to lose two children. He lost two children himself. He doesn't dare step up and tell his father, oh, you know, give me your other child. Everything's going to be okay. He knows what that means to lose two children. He's not going to just tell his father to do it. He only steps up, as you said, when really there is no choice. Then at that moment, he feels something has to be done and he steps up. But what happened? What does he say that's so unique? And I think the key to understanding this is the word Arev, Arvut. This is translated as, I myself will be the surety. Now, it's not the same word. Surety is about making the other person sure that they're going to get something. But the word Arev means something else. And as we've mentioned many times, when you want to know what the word is, go to the first time it shows up. So let's
let's look for the word Arev. And the first time it shows up is actually as Erev. We see it a lot of times in the creation. Erev means evening, right? Vayi Erev, vayi Voker. So what is Arev in this context? When does that show up? And we go back and the only place we find it in the Torah is where? By Yehuda himself. In last parsha, with the story with Tamar, when he says, I'm going to send you over something. And she says, how will I know? And he leaves her an Eravon. Eravon turns out to be something that because of that, at the end of the story, she sends it to him. And no matter what it takes, and even though it was a huge embarrassment, and even though he could have stepped aside from this whole story, he was Arev. He was committed. He didn't step aside. He said, this is my fault. I'm here. I'm not going to run away from this story. And I think that's what the word Arev means. Arev is from the word Erev, we say, which is the evening. It's the time between day and night when they mix together. The word Erev means to mix. Le'arbev in Hebrew means when things are mixed together. So what does it mean to be an Arev? It means that I'm mixed in this story. I'm a part of this story. I'm committed, not just because I'm saying that I'm committed, not because I have the money to put a deposit. No, it's much more than that. It's I'm a part of this. I'm in this for good. And maybe that's what we see here with Yehuda. When Yehuda steps up, he doesn't say like Reuven says, everything's going to be okay. He knows things are complicated. He knows things don't always go well in life. As we spoke about last week, he's the Baal Tshuva, the one who also messes up and fails, but knows how to get up again. He knows that life has its ups and its downs, and you can climb up from those downs. So he doesn't promise Yaakov, you know, everything for sure will be okay. But he says, I will send to you my whole life. In other words, I'm in this for good. I'm mixing myself in this. I'm a part of this. And as we see when Yehuda ends this, suddenly we see an interesting puzzle. Yaakov, who is sort of passive, we see him arguing, not giving solutions. He's sort of just there saying what's wrong. He's still mourning the loss of Yosef. And then suddenly, just after Yehuda says that, suddenly Yaakov seems to get up and he says, Im ken? If so, so what? Im ken? And he starts telling them what to do. Okay, take this, do that, go to there and take it. What, what happened to Yaakov? Yaakov suddenly woke up. Maybe Yaakov finally heard what he was waiting for in a time of Ra'av, which is, by the way, the opposite of Arev, when everyone just cares for themselves, for their own food. He finally hears maybe what he was missing for so many years from the story of Yosef is Eravon, Arvut, someone who puts himself there. I'm mixed together. Kol Yisrael Arevim We say we're all mixed together. We're all dependent on each other. We're not just committed for each other because we promise, because we, we realize that we're mixed all into one story. And when Yaakov hears that Arvut, he doesn't know yet Yosef is alive, but already just hearing about that Arvut of Yehuda stepping up, suddenly his life comes back to him again and he's able to start saying, okay, so do this, do that, and start leading the family again. Wonderful, wonderful. And like you're saying, we have to pay attention to the words the Torah uses. We keep on saying it time and time again because it's so clear in this story over here, like you just mentioned, the fact that there's a famine going on, it could be ignored, this fact, Ra'av Ba'aretz, but the Torah expresses it in a specific pasuk, Ra'av Kaved Ba'aretz. There's a strong famine in the land and this Ra'av creates this Arev, this Arvut. We needed this famine to create this Arvut. But it's not only about this cute play of words, Ra'av, Arev, it's even more than that. Because when you look in the Psukim, when you see the brothers coming back from Mitzrayim, what did the brothers tell Yaakov that Yosef told them? The brothers turned to Yaakov and tell them that this guy in Mitzrayim blamed us of being Meraglim. And then he put one in prison and he told us, you're going to be tested if you bring back your younger brother and take back with you the food that you want to take with you. However, how does he call that food? He doesn't call it food. He calls it Re'avon, which is exactly just like the word Eravon. And when you leave one brother by me and you take that Ravon back to your home, then you will be tested if you will bring back that younger brother to me, then I will know you are not spies. Then I will know that you are not individuals, but you are actually one united family together that has an Eravon with each other that are not only guaranteed, not only an assurance, but are actually Arvut, as we say in Hebrew, that are Arev for each other. This is what the brothers tell Yaakov when they came back, because this is a hint to what Yosef is looking for. This is what Yosef wants to hear. And also, you know, you could even say this goes back even way more than that because every time there was a Ra'av in the Aretz, you saw both Vayetzchak and Abraham Avinu, the first thing they said was to their wives, say you are my sister. Because like you were saying, when there's a Ra'av, a Ra'av is a situation when each individual is for themselves. Each individual thinks for themselves. Each individual is all alone by themselves. And the exact opposite from it is Arvut, is when people get together, is when people take responsibility for each other. People have this commitment to each other 
brother. This is what happens in a time of the Ra'av. Do you stay in the Ra'av? Do you stay in that all alone by themselves? Or do you step up and find this Arvut? This is what Yosef is expecting back in Mitzrayim. This is what Yehuda steps up over here and shows. And this is what Yehuda is about, like you were saying. He's the only one until now that offered an Arvut back in last week's parasha. He knows what it means to be in a rev. He knows what it means also to lose two sons. He knows what it means to be mixed in the reality, not only on top of it, in some kind of utopian way where everything is perfect and everything goes the way of plan. We talked about that both Yosef in the reality that is forced onto him has to struggle to find his way. And the same thing Yehuda, sometimes not always is it forced on him, but he decides to go through this reality because within the reality that he lives through, he knows how to step up and show that responsibility, show that commitment that is needed. And this commitment, this Arvut, we see later on, many generations later, as the Midrash connects the two things with David HaMelech. When David HaMelech's father, Yishai, sends him to his brothers, he sends David to his brothers to bring that Eravon, and the Midrash connects the two. This is that Eravon that Yehuda stepped up and offered back then to Yaakov. Now it's time to go redeem that responsibility, that commitment to Amisad. It's time to step up and fulfill that commitment you had to Yaakov for Binyamin, being Shaul, the descendant from Binyamin. The Midrash connects them both and says, that's why David HaMelech over there stepped up to go and save Binyamin, to go and save Amisai because this commitment that Yehuda made over here, this is what Mashiach is about. This is what Mashiach Ben David is about. This is the stepping up of Shevet Yehuda when it's most needed in the most darkest times when reality is so dark and you can't really see around, when reality is so dark and so confusing and you need that light to stand up and shine to tell you where to go and what to follow. This is what Mashiach Ben David, this is what Shevet Yehuda is about and unfortunately sometimes Yehuda isn't there and we need someone else to step up and raise that flag. That is Matityahu. That is the Hashmonaim in Hanukkah. In the darkest times when everything seemed so on the one hand so wonderful. Everything was amazing. They have an incredible culture. Everything was beautiful. Everything was well. Such an incredible empire brought wisdom into the world. Brought the thought, philosophy and everything and some amazing things. However, it's confusing and being able to recognize that confusion that it is a confusion and the confusion is the darkness as Chazal say. That's the Choshech being able to recognize it and then step up and say we have to follow the light. We have to follow the flag. We have to follow the right way and it's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult because it's difficult times but we have to figure out the right way to continue walking on. Just like Yehuda says he can't guarantee that he will bring back Binyamin but this will be his life struggle to make sure that he figures out a way to walk in this darkness. This is what Yehuda says to Yaakov. This is what the Hashmonaim were about. We're about stepping up in that darkness in the dark times again when every Everything seems wonderful. It doesn't seem dark. However, it is dark because it's so confusing and you need to step up and say clearly what are the borders? What are the lines? What is the Shulchan Aruch say? What does he not say? What is he allowed? What is it allowed? What is not allowed? And those lines of halacha, the lines you walk and where you don't walk, this is what the story of Am Yisrael has been throughout the entire generations as we talk about Mashiach ben Yosef, Mashiach ben David. This is the struggle that these two Meshichim lead and continue to lead throughout the generations and being able to be a leader these kind of times requires a person that can step up in these moments on the one hand as we said so many times has the dream knows how to dream but also knows how to implement these dreams into reality just like Paro looks for at the beginning of the parasha when he says dreams are beautiful but somebody has to fulfill this in reality everybody wants to be that CEO on top and living that dreamy life but somebody has to get there somebody has to lead the way to get there because it's not an easy road it's not an easy path and we have to find that right person then Yosef is brought out of the boat then Yosef steps up then Yosef Yosef is given the keys to Mitzrayim. This is Yehuda who also steps up over here and shows that even in the dark times, in the famine, in the Ra'av, when no one is stepping up, he knows how to step up and turn the Re'avon into a Ravon. And this is what Am Yisrael has been about throughout the entire generations. Beautiful, beautiful. I think this really connects so nice to what we were saying last week about these different types of leadership. How Yosef was a leader from above. They feared him. But Yehuda, we never see him being chosen. He was the leader from below and we see why here. Not because, you know, he had these superpowers. He was there. He understood. He was a rev. He didn't promise everything was going to be beautiful. He didn't say, I'm going to take care of everything. Like Reuven said, he said, I'm here. I'm committed. I'm with you the whole way throughout the whole journey. I'm going to be here and I'm going to step up and lead the way. And this is Yehuda, the Baal Tshuva, the one who steps up from below and is able to reach heights that sometimes the people that are Tzadikim Murim can't reach. Because because he's coming from below. That's Yehuda, and as you said, that's 
Hanukkah as well. From within this darkness, from within this confusion and mess in the Beit Mikdash, they find this new light and that the Rambam explains, brings a new generation of Torah. The Mishnah is created, a whole new generation and a whole new level of Am Yisrael is created from this mess, from this depth, but stepping up and following through the whole way allows building a new step, a new stage of Am Yisrael. Beautiful, beautiful. And also this week's video is dedicated to Lunishmat, Rabbi Ava Mitzchak Levine from Philadelphia, an uncle of ours that was Nifto last week. Rabbi Levine for many, many years, decades, was a pillar of light in the world of Torah in America. A true remnant to the giants of the previous generation of Yerushalayim that he got to grow up among them and got to live among them and bring that light to America for decades. Shine that light of Allah, shine that light of Torah in America. May his neshama have an aliyah and may we be zocha to walk in his giant footsteps. And as usual, we'll just remind our viewers again what we've discussed the past couple of years. We've discussed last year, what is the whole idea of bringing Binyamin down? Why is it so important for Yosef that this is what proves that they are not spies? How are the two things connected? Again, everything in the Torah has a meaning. Why is Yosef blaming them for being spies? What's this idea behind being spies? We've also discussed the previous year, this whole idea that when the brothers come down to Mitzrayim, the Torah emphasizes that Yosef remembered the dreams that he dreamt and therefore he did what he did. Why is it so important for Yosef to fulfill his dreams? What are those dreams about? What is dreaming about? We'll link those two videos after this video. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like it, comment below on YouTube, share the video around. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing and shkoyach yitzi. Shkoyach tuvia, Chanukah Sameach, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Chanukah Sameach, and we'll talk again next week.